this is a somewhat controversial subject, and those of you who have already listened to the interview that I did with David Chandler will be familiar with some of the arguments that we raise. However, this question did receive the most votes, so it's a topic we're going to explore again. So, to put it simply, despite the common use of the phrase, the Cambodian Genocide, to refer to what happened during the revolutionary period in Cambodia from 1975 to 1979, the bulk of the terror which occurred during this time does not qualify as genocide. This video will be an attempt to outline that position. However, to say that the term Cambodian Genocide is not accurate is not the same as an attempt to lessen any of the horror and tragedy that occurred at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. It is not a challenge to the number of those who suffered and died, nor is it in any way a bid to exonerate those responsible for one of the worst human disasters of the 20th century. The fact is that the population of Cambodia was enslaved, and that perhaps one in four Cambodians died because of the Khmer Rouge. I'm also not contesting that certain ethnic or religious groups, like the Vietnamese or Chams, were the victims of genocidal policies. So with all of that said, what are we talking about? Surely that sign above tall slang, or the covers of books and articles, or, you know, the Wikipedia page isn't wrong. Well, most of this is going to revolve around the definitions of certain crimes, and the one in question is a good starting point. Here is the UN Convention on Genocide. Now, if we highlight some relevant areas here, and remember, this is a legal term, designed to be used for prosecution, we can say that the crime of genocide includes any of the following. Intending to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. And because we're talking about a murderous regime like the Khmer Rouge, we will also just highlight the relevant part here that says killing members of this group as the method of destroying it. So, if a government decided intended to get rid of a racial or religious group, and they went out to do this by killing members of this group, that would qualify as genocide. Simple enough, right? Well, the issue with trying to fit this definition of genocide to the victims of the Khmer Rouge is that the vast majority of them were Khmer. It was Cambodians killing other Cambodians. There are strong cases to be made, indeed, what turned into successful legal cases at the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, that the targeting of groups like the Muslim Cham minority or the Vietnamese did qualify as genocidal. That is to say that the Khmer Rouge decided to exterminate these groups because they were Vietnamese or Cham. However, the number of those killed within those victim categories represents only a fraction of the total. If we base our estimates on the figures in Ben Kiernan's Pol Pot regime, this would indicate roughly 100,000 or so, which is around 5% of the total death toll. Therefore, we could speak about the Khmer Rouge as genocidal, technically, but to rely on the phrase, the Cambodian genocide, with the implication that the tragedy in its entirety was a genocide, is not accurate. 
But aren't the Khmer a national group? Doesn't that satisfy the definition? Not exactly. Although the vast majority of victims were Cambodian, they were not killed because they were Cambodian. This is the important difference. The Khmer Rouge defined their Cambodian victims not because of their race, but because of their supposed politics. This can be highlighted by looking at the broad categories of victims who were marked for elimination by the CPK. The first wave of killings initiated by the regime revolved around members of the former government. After the fall of Phnom Penh, high-ranking officials were targeted almost immediately. This widened to those who had links to the government and military. Another category of internal enemies that could fall victim to killings were those broadly defined as counter-revolutionary. This included the so-called New or April 17 people, the evacuees from the cities, and there was particular attention paid to intellectuals within that group. But being considered counter-revolutionary could also just be based on inability to work. Those who got sick happened to have said the wrong thing, or stolen some food to survive, to name just a few depressingly minor infractions that could mean death. This is a broad definition, and it is not to say that all of those who fit this description were marked for execution, but it generally corresponds to the kinds of killings we associate most with the Khmer Rouge. These seemingly arbitrary deaths, the common result of deviating from the idea of the ideal member of the new revolutionary society. I would say within this Cambodian majority of victims, another large category would be those Khmer Rouge who were purged. For instance, the majority of those sent to the infamous torture facility known as S-21 were Khmer Rouge themselves. But purges of large strings of traitors sometimes involved massive amounts of killings in different administrative zones of the country, without necessarily being sent to the capital for questioning. Now, what these categories of victims have in common is that they were defined on the basis of their political difference, not their race, ethnicity, or religion. Being Cambodian wasn't considered counter-revolutionary, but rather some flaw relating to that person's ability to become the ideal revolutionary, be that ties to the old regime, inability to work, breaking a rule, getting sick, or links to some other traitorous person. That was why you might be targeted. So if it isn't a genocide... What are we going to call this immense and tragic loss of life? Well, as some scholars of Cambodian history will point out, the term crimes against humanity fits what happened in democratic Kampuchea far better than genocide. This is another legally enforceable term, and if we overlap it, with the general crimes of the Khmer Rouge, not just the killings, then we can include all of the horror that was common within the prison with no walls. Murder, extermination, enslavement, population movements, torture, rape, persecution based on political, racial, and religious grounds. Based on this, then we can conclude that the Khmer Rouge Revolution was a textbook example of crimes against humanity. This is why the recent tribunal was able to successfully prosecute the surviving leaders and responsible persons on these grounds, as it certainly describes the bulk of the horror that occurred. Well, why do some people still choose to use the term genocide? 
Well, there are a variety of reasons why someone might choose to use the phrase to describe the revolution. Some academics have made the case that there was a racialization of some Cambodian victims of the regime, a claim generally supported by the Khmer Rouge slogan, Khmer bodies with Vietnamese minds. This, it's argued, means that it was killing based on race or ethnicity, and therefore fits the definition. Someone like Ben Kiernan argues along these lines. However, another academic such as Steve Hedder counters this by claiming that even that phrase was employed not to identify Cambodians with the Vietnamese race, but rather their politics. There is a massive conversation to be had about that, and I would recommend anyone interested to look up Hedda's review of Kiernan's Pol Pot regime for more information. However, even if we accept Kiernan's point, it seems a stretch to consider the use of this phrase during the purge of East Zone Cadre as a means to characterise the majority of killings as genocidal. Another academic kind of argument in favour of using the term would be a kind of twisting or outright disregarding of the UN definition of genocide as the true meaning of the term. Tom Forthrop and Helen Jarvis in Getting Away with Genocide make that move explicitly when they state that they use the term genocide as a shorthand for the large number of horrendous crimes committed by the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. We speak of genocide in a generic or sociological sense. Others simply claim that the term Cambodian genocide is within common parlance, that the revolution has been consistently referred to as genocide for decades, and can be accepted as such. This can also be tied to some survivors of the regime who have adopted a cultural understanding of the term, and believe that the suffering endured merits using the phrase genocide to describe it. This positions genocide as a kind of finality in the spectrum of crimes, and I'm certainly no arbiter on the matter, but I don't quite see how that is the case, particularly when the term crimes against humanity seems to carry more weight in terms of human suffering and overlaps precisely with the kind of project that the Khmer Rouge sought to embark on. There are other reasons too, ranging from political to economic or perhaps more mundane reasons, like including keywords within titles so search engines may better locate and share your content. What do you think? Is this question of using the phrase Cambodian genocide something that lawyers and academics should be concerned with? Should the definitions of crimes like this matter in common use? Whichever you decide, I think there are valid reasons, but I hope that choice is a considered one. Please like, subscribe, or share this video if you feel so inclined. And remember that these video essays are a side offering of the Cambodian History podcast I produce focused on the tragedy of the Khmer Rouge regime called In the Shadows of Utopia. Thanks for watching.